Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today I bring you a special keyboard. This is the first Hall Effect keyboard that I will be reviewing. Akko did send this out to me. It is also their 7th anniversary edition. Um, I have yet to get any of their anniversary editions. I think last year it was Tokyo, um, but I really must say that I like the designs of them. I, I don't know what it is about their cat with the headphones, but I've always enjoyed their logo. So this one definitely expresses it in um, the design of the keycaps. Now this is a Mod 007B HE PC. So it's made out of polycarbonate. It's the B edition or the revision. Um, I actually have the first Mod 007 that was aluminum. Um, and actually I've replaced the motherboard because they had a, I think I have the B on there, but it's the one without LEDs and it has a QMK by, if I'm not mistaken. I have, I have to recall on that one. But if you are not familiar with Hall Effect, just a quick overview, I'm not a scientist, but the way that I understand it, and when you have a regular mechanical switch, obviously when you press down on the switch, you know, you've got the circuit that goes throughout the entire keyboard. And then when you uh, press the switch, it's either going to connect or disconnect that circuit at a certain point. Um, that's why we have resistors behind every one of the, uh, the sockets or the actual switches so that the, the electricity doesn't go backwards and go forward. And you can read the MCU can read from what position that break or that circuit completion happened. Now within a Hall effect, we basically again have the um, we have the keyboard generates a magnetic field around each key. Let's say this is the PCB and this is the magnetic field that it's generating. Well the Hall effect says that when you press down or when you bring a magnet into this this magnetic field, it's going to affect. So here's, let's say, the stem of the switch, which has a magnet at it. So it's going to change the voltage that's going on. And that allows, because this is an, actually an analog signal, where this is a, either a 1 or a 0. It's either on or it's off. This actually changes. There's a a scale of how much you know microvolts are going through here and that can actually determine you know what position that you can basically create a translation well if it's at you know x microvolts then it must be equal to 0 0.1 millimeter of actuation so that allows you or it allows you to program the MCU to say okay I want it to activate at a tenth of a millimeter or I want it to activate down lower at three and a half millimeters. Now I have read but I don't believe it's the case that you can also adjust the force. Um, I don't think that's a thing yet because they'd have to modify the magnetic field but I could be mistaken and I'm sure we'll be finding out here as we get into it. So that's just a quick primer <laughs> into Hall Effect. Obviously that's not everything. A Hall Effect can be affected by magnets nearby, different uh, electrical noise. So, but I think they've pretty much got it figured out for keyboards as they seem to be coming quite popular. I know uh, Mons Geek has one either out or coming out soon, which I hope to take a look at so that I can compare. Although Mako, Ako and Mons Geek are the same company, but I do know there's some other companies with some coming down the road. Um, I think Kidu is just sending me the NJ80, uh, they call it the CP. Um, so I'm looking forward to comparing and seeing the difference in how much features these different Hall Effect keyboards will have. All right, so today we're taking a look at the Akko Mod 007B HEPC. Yes, that's a mouthful, <laughs> but um, if I'm not mistaken, it's CNC polycarbonate, but I could be wrong. 
So let's go ahead and open this up and see what we got. So before we take a look at the keyboard, I like to take a look to see what's in here. We've got a manual, which always has this. I am always very grateful to have the um, the, the cards from... It just it reminds me or just shows me that somebody handled this, you know, by hand, checked to make sure everything was here, that it was complete. So Akko always includes this not only with their keyboards, but with their switches as well. And that's something that I appreciate. And we have the manual that gives us the basic configurations, shortcut keys. We have it in two languages. Um, it looks like we are dealing with a three mode. So we can do Bluetooth and 2.4 uh, wireless as well as USB. And we're going to also have to take a look at the, uh, the software, I think, so that we can see what kind of features we have with the HE switches. As always, uh, <laughs> these are my favorite uh, cables, to be quite honest, the ones from Akko and Monsky. Um, they last me the longest. They're the most durable. They have a coil, but they don't have an aviator connector in there. So I like, I like these. All right, we got a switch puller. we got a keycap puller. And we also have our 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Now, thankfully enough, Akko has also included a dust cover. Um, I think, especially nowadays, it's just important to, you know, keep stuff clean. And putting your, putting this on top of your keyboard um, in between use, or especially over the weekend if you leave it at the office, I think it's a great way to help keep the keyboard clean. And a cleaner keyboard, cleaner environment more hygienic so I appreciate that and here we are with the mod with the Akko mod 007 B H E P C so the polycarbonate plate it is quite nice it does look exactly to the it, it, the way that it's shaped the form everything it is exactly like the aluminum version so um, I can't see anything that would be a telltale sign of a uh, injection mold. So it very well could be uh, CNC, though I'll have to look that up. So I do believe we have the Akko um, cream yellow in here, but the magnetic version. Yep, cream yellow. Now let's see. Well, that came out pretty easy. So here we are with the bottom of a magnetic switch. Kind of a little reminiscent to the optical switch, except it doesn't have the stem that sticks down. But we can definitely see the magnet when I press it in. Um, hmm. Now that's something I was not expecting to see. There are actually kale hot swap sockets on this um, PCB. Hmm. I mean, Kale style. I don't know if they're the Kale brand, but... Huh. And that's not something I was expecting to see on there. So that's definitely something to check out when I come back to this. But this... Uh, because there's definitely no pins on here. Right? There's just a slider and a little magnet down at the bottom. But I am just uh, kind of surprised to see actual pins and does not have the cutouts for the five pins. It just has the three regular pins. Huh. That's, uh, that's interesting. I got to say, that's real interesting. But this plate, curious. Yep. All right. Just as I thought, the plate is aluminum. So we have an aluminum plate. We have a PC body. We are south facing. These, I want to say, are either an MDA profile or an OEM profile. I'll have to look that up.
All right, the space bar ticks a little bit. Oh, those appear to be somewhat new. I haven't seen them that color that I can recall. So I will come back to these and I will lube them as they... They do have some lube, but it's very minimal. But let me... Yeah, I would have definitely done something with that space bar, but let me see here. Go ahead and take this out. All right, there is some lubrication, but it seems that, well, on the space bar anyway, they forgot the elbows. Here they put some on one elbow, but it doesn't seem to be any on that elbow. So, but this sounds fine, and the uh, tolerances with the plates seem to be fairly decent, though. Yeah, they could use, they could definitely use a little bit of tape. Um... I think that would put them on there a little bit tighter, but the, the this one does not sound awful. This one, this one needs some help, but let's see. Oh yeah, these are super loose. A piece of tape, a piece of tape, and a little bit of um loop on the corner on the uh, elbows of the wire would make a big difference and take away that that ticking that it has because that's that's not something you want but that thankfully is easy easily fixable but oh, I forgot to even check does this have the ability for screw and stabilizers I do know that the um, the one that I replaced in the original mod did, but this isn't, oh, yep. It does appear to have the ability to add screw and stabilizers. We do have the holes, so, huh. Now that's definitely something that I'm going to have to come back to. I'm definitely gonna come back to and at least tune these stabilizers and get them sound them much better. Um, and play around a little bit more with the HE effect. Today we're just just looking at what it's like out of the box and what we can do with the software. So the design I love. Um, I've got to say, like I said, the, the mod 007 was one of the, uh, yeah, I want to say it was the first aluminum 75% one that I, that I purchased. So it holds a special place in my heart. It is not within arm's reach, but I do believe I know where it's at. Um, it is a nice metal knob with a matte finish, and it has the inner uh, plastic collar, even though it has the D knob, it's just a round one, but it has the little flares on the inside, which grip to it and allow you to, um, to turn it with, um, you know, with spots, uh, with uh, movements. Uh, there's a specific name for each of those positions that it, it basically clicks against or gives a feedback, a tactile feedback on. Now, the keycap set is obviously, you know, very custom. It's cool. I like it. Um, I'm always for novelties, but I do like it when they include just the normal keys. If for some reason you wanted to just, well, those I think you could live with. It'd be maybe, you know, the enter key, uh, backslash, the tab, the caps lock, the one, the keys that are, you know, it, it would be nice if they could include just at least those keys so that you can, uh, you can go novelty or you can go normal. Um, that's just, that's just one of my things, but I, it's not, it's more of a nitpicky thing. All right, so let's see what we got here when we plug this keyboard in. Oh, lights come on almost instantly. Let me turn lights down in here so we can actually get a better look at these lights.
So here we see that we have really nice vivid colors. I love how nicely the switches come in and out. I'm still just curious. I mean, I almost want to stick a switch in there and go, will it work? But I don't want to break anything. All right, it seems to be disconnected because I put it in there and it doesn't, doesn't actuate, but. It does actuate with the magnetic switch, so. Maybe they just added it on top of an existing mod zero. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious, and I do at some point expect to come in here and open it up and see what it's like in there. Now, oh, we do have um, two sets of flip-out feet, which is nice. So it gives us the three different angles. And then we do have, let's cycle through the uh, color effects here. Oh, wow. Okay, so we can actually adjust the travel distance from the keyboard. So F1 gives us two millimeter. Function one. Function two gives us half a millimeter. Yeah, that's definitely and then there's function three, which is supposed to be the most sensitive. Yeah. That's definitely the most sensitive. Let me go back to one, which is two millimeters. Still kind of sensitive, just not as sensitive. But then function four, customized switch actuation distance through Aco Cloud Driver. So we'll have to take a look at that. Um, we can turn control into menu key. We can do a factory reset function. All right, and we have the, um, if we press and hold, it'll switch to the, um, brightness of the LEDs, press and hold again, and we'll have volume control. So I like that built in. Um, and then we have function home page, the home page up, end and page down, as well as what well, this function backslash is going to set the individual colors. If you want to go single color. And then these are going to cycle through the different light effects that you can get. And as always, Akko does actually bring a decent RGB to the game, in my opinion. Um, especially with their newest motherboards, I think that the RGB on them is actually quite nice. And just like with aluminum keyboard with the Mons Geek, we have uh, this on and off switch for the wireless modes. If, if we put it top, it's going to be battery, but it's going to be Mac mode. In the middle, it's going to be Windows mode with from uh, USB-C and the bottom is going to be Windows in battery mode and then for Bluetooth devices instead of starting at the Q and the W it starts at the E ERT are Bluetooth devices 1, 2, and 3 Y is the 2.4 gigahertz and U is in case you are in one of those wireless modes but you want to go wired so you would switch it over to U to get into the um, the wired mode now that's very similar to the Mons Geek um, the W versions of the Mons Geek keyboards they have that same switch so so we have some familiarity uh, with the way that the wireless uh, works uh, it, that leads me more and more to believe that it is a, a CNC except they added pockets for that but they didn't want to change the position of the switch because it stays on the motherboard engineering wise I could see where that makes sense um, though I still think there are going to be some people that you know oh, I got to carry a, a switch puller with me because I mean yeah if you've been doing it for a while you might be able to get the keycap off with your just your fingers but 
it's gonna still be a bit of a you know thing and I mean granted if you're a little bit creative you could probably create a keycap puller out of say maybe a couple of paper clips you know if you're at the office but for some people it's not going to be an issue for others i think it, it may be but that's neither here nor there um so we have the very similar i mean similar it's exactly the same um, I, know, I just gotta pull it out all right so yeah oh. so here is the original mod the 007 um since 2016 I guess this they're going into their eighth year. This probably came out at the end of last year. But um, as we can see, even the bottom, although we have a few, we have a couple more screws on the plastic version, but even the feet are in the same position. Um, I mean, the, uh, the rubber feet. Obviously, this one doesn't have the fold-out feet. But otherwise, we have the same side profile. Um, Almost exactly the same size of knob, or actually, I think this is a replacement. So, this is probably, I think this is, yeah, this is not the one that came with it. This is one that I added afterwards. Um, but, I don't even know what I have loaded in here. Oh, these are the CIY Sakuras or Nasaras. Nasura? They, these are some nice tactile. I gotta say, I mean, while they're different, I, I like them both. I mean, yes, there's a nostalgia. Okay, I got an FR4 plate in here. There's definitely the nostalgia. Like I said, this is the first 75% um, aluminum keyboard that I personally picked up. I think the next one was the, uh, uh, the Q1. Uh, but this one I, I got first, and I have a lot of fondness for it. Um, Obviously, I would have loved to get me the Satisfaction 75, but I didn't have that kind of money to spend on a keyboard uh, back when it was, and I didn't didn't want to participate in a group buy. But that's neither here nor there. Um, I've enjoyed this keyboard. I've cycled it through as my, especially when I'm I've got my numpad out. I've cycled this through as my daily, and I've loaded everything from heavy tactiles in it to light linears. I haven't had the um, the Aqua Silvers in here for a while with a set of um, MT3 keycaps, and I just enjoyed it. It's a it's a nice keyboard. It's a nice looking keyboard. I like the profile. I like the way that it looks. But I like now that I have an aluminum one and a PC one, so I can actually compare um, how they sound between the two. So I definitely look forward to coming back to this. I do think I have an extra plate, but I have to look because on here I have an FR4 plate. On here we have, looks like an aluminum plate. So I'm definitely interested in opening this up, seeing you know what's in here, but out of the box, it's delivering a super nice Hockey experience, in my opinion, and I mean we really don't have any. I mean, obviously there's some foam, so it's delivering a bit of a thocky experience. Though the only foam that I believe it has is below. I mean, I guess it does have the. It has both the IXPE and the PET foam layer. I don't know how I missed that before. So. I think that's what's um, obviously assisting in delivering that very nice poppy. It's a it's a tad muted, but some people prefer that sound. Uh, this is a um, a free mode again. The switches under the caps and. It does use the Aco Cloud Driver software, which I've got to say, in my experience, it has evolved a lot from 
when it first started out, and it's become a much more comprehensive and complete um, closed source software. But I am honestly, I, I love this uh, this design, this keycap set. It pops. My uh, wife and daughters definitely love it as well. So, but it is a die sub. 1.2, 1.3 millimeter keycaps. Yeah, they appear to be 1.3. So it's not bad. At least we're above that one millimeter threshold. No ping. Has a nice weight to it, and I think it's a. It is a nice keyboard, and having that um, ability to set the actuation point. I think it's going to be key, especially since you can, I mean, do it straight from the keyboard. So, you know, you can just go function one, function two. So you can have very light if you're, if you're gaming. So you just want those rapid fire to where you're not even really taking your finger off of the key all the way. You know, you're just, just spamming that button so that you can, you know, fire on your enemy. But when you're, say, coding or something and you pause in the middle, and you have it set at a different actuation force, even if your fingers are resting on it a little bit, it's not going to actuate. So, to me, I think this is that kind of meets both worlds kind of thing. Because, hey, uh, I want a game. Okay. Oh, now i got to work. Okay, we can do that too. So, I kind of like that, the duality that this keyboard with that technology offers. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Akko Mod 007B HE PC. This is the B version of the Mod 007, which includes some design updates. It uses HE or Hall Effect technology and is made out of polycarbonate. This is their seventh anniversary edition. This particular model is a three mode, 75% with a knob, as well as HE cream yellow magnetic switches. They are loaded with die sub PVT OEM keycaps that are 1.3 millimeters thick. The BCB is also screw in stabilizer compatible. The PCB is also compatible with either HE switches or three pin mechanical switches, though they have to be plugged in to the Akko cloud driver anytime you switch them out so that it can be calibrated. The three mode version includes a 3600 milliamp hour battery and weighs it at 1145 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 25 millimeters above the typing surface and the back sits at 35 millimeters providing for a default typing angle of 7 degrees. Flipping out the first set of feet will raise the back up to 41 millimeters and change the angle to 9 degrees. Using the final set of flip out feet will raise the back up to 48 millimeters changing the typing angle to 12 degrees. This keyboard manufacturer retails for $139.99 wired and $149.99 for the three mode variant. All right, so I um, went ahead and uh, updated, I had to update Oco Cloud software and it recognized the keyboard at that point. There was a firmware upgrade, which I did. Uh, and I also recalibrated and messed around with the different actuation positions, but the website clearly states, and it has hot swap sockets for three pin switches. It doesn't have those extra two leg pins and it says it works with either, but that you need to recalibrate afterwards. Um, but I was not able to get any three pin switches. I tried a handful of different Akko ones and I only tried in one position at a time, but I tried different keys all over the place. And anytime I would put that in and go to keyboard tester, that key just did not respond to anything. And I redid the calibration. So um, I don't know if perhaps they disable that feature or something's going on, but I'm going to let Octo know about this because it's definitely in their marketing material. And I mean, the sockets are there. I wouldn't, don't see. A reason for placing sockets 
there if you're not going to you know be using them because they're unnecessary for the hall effect all right so future mark interrupting here real quick so i reached out to akko i wanted to get the clear story because if it was true then this keyboard's even better than i thought and it is true so i this is the only three pen that i had handy this is a um a franken switch it has the uh, cream a cream stem with the uh body of a silver um and the, and the spring of the silver aco cs silver so when or if you want to use one or more three pin switches mixed with your magnetic switches what you do is you go ahead and place the switch you go to aco's website and you download the latest version of the aco cloud driver it should say magnetic um, switch or uh, HE or something like that, but it's the latest version. Once you get it installed and you open it up, you want to go. You're going to want to go to the About section, and you're going to want to go to the. It's the top, the bottom um, right hand side. It's going to say Calibration. It's going to press a button. It's going to spin for a second, give you a message. Then in red text, it's going to go over and say, Now press each key in sequence. That's where I kind of got lost, but. Even if you're changing out only one switch, um, like I just did right there, you put it into calibration mode, and when it's that red text that, say, that says press every key in sequence, you literally want to go through, and you want to make sure that you press them all the way. Um, obviously, don't beat on it, but start with the escape. And this is the way that I did it. I think that they just really want every key to be pressed but it's easier to do it obviously if you do it in sequence to not get lost but just start with the escape key make sure that you're hitting every key once and only once and go through and make sure that they're fully actuating and then once you do that you press continue it'll spin again for a little bit and then now that switch that particular it I, I don't know how you know whatever it does internally it's switching to allow communication from whatever switches have three pin switches in there. And they work just fine. And I've done it with a couple different switches. It, it doesn't care as long as you go through the calibration process, right? And I haven't done it wrong once, but I do strike it pretty hard. Um, and you can mix. So this to me, this is a game changer. I, I had no idea about this before uh, this was sent out to me for review that this keyboard could use both magnetic switches and regular switches because I mean I, as far as customization goes you can't beat that you know I mean what if you want to use a particular you know I mean magnetic switches are new so there is now while there's choice and they're growing every day there's obviously not as many choices as the regular MX clone I mean there's thousands of switches to choose from and some you know some people may well I like these particular clickies on my modifier keys or you know whatever combination you want you might want but still want you know like say you only want you know uh, your fire buttons for whatever game you play or your jump buttons or or the buttons that you use for a particular game to be fast and actuating you know at the highest speed um, but just for a few keys, but then you want the rest of the keys just to be normal and you're fine with having a little bit of difference when you're typing, well, then you can do that. Um, so that I think is pretty cool that you have that option because it opens up a world. I mean, I never saw an optical keyboard that allowed for both optical and mechanical switches, which I think would have been a pretty cool. I kind of thought it would have come along at some point, and maybe there is one, and I don't know about it. If there is, let me know down below. I'd appreciate it. I'd, I'd love to know. But I always thought that they could combine, you know, because, I mean, they could add the little light sensors below the po main post hole on the PCB, but also have hot swap sockets. So, I mean, yeah, you might want to stay to three pin because you don't want the five pins blocking because they'd be blocking the light unless you put them on the other side. So, I mean, I think there'd be a couple different ways to do it. And then you'd have a keyboard that accepted both optical and mechanical because there's only, I mean, what, a couple of dozen at most optical switches that are out there. Um, and most of them are made by Gatoron, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I just wanted to go ahead and 
let you guys know that this could be done and that's how you do it. So if you want to know how to enable both magnetic and three pin switches on the Akko uh, Mod 007 PCHE or I would assume any um, of the Akko HE keyboards. Because I mean, this, I believe this is their first one, but I could be mistaken, but I'm sure they're planning more. Everybody's putting one out. Uh, but this is the first one that I've seen that has optional or that has the option for mechanical switches. I mean, three pin, so, but that's fine. I mean, if you have five pin switches and you want to use them there, you just have to clip them off the plastic pieces and they'll go in there because they're still three pins. So it has the regular hot swap sockets. It just does have the extra legs for support, which are great, but they really, really, really are meant for stability on plateless builds. Um, yes, they provide more stability, you know, regularly, but it's not like they're going to fall out. If there's a plate, three pins are more than enough to keep the switch in there. They're not going to fall out. They're not, you know, you're not going to shake the keyboard. The switches fall out. So I, I think that that's pretty cool. Magnetic as well as mechanical, all in one keyboard. That's pretty cool. So I just wanted to interrupt the existing review to uh, let you guys know about this, because I think that's a pretty cool feature for a nice keyboard from a company that's just, they, they keep putting out really nice keyboards all right so now back to the review so anyway that being said um i still love <laughs> this keyboard i do hope that it actually does work with three pen switches as well but um i like that i can actually put it to a really you know low actuation point 3.6 is is my good so i have to press down it nice and hard so even though this is a lighter switch it's not going to actuate, you know, just by me putting my hands on it. It's going to want me to press down. Um, the Aco Cloud Driver, uh, you know, gives you the ability to set up layers, um, remap certain keys, but on function layer one, you can't remap the ones that are already pre-mapped, and you cannot change the button press. On this one, the button press, if you press and hold, changes from controlling the brightness of the RGB. To controlling volume so that's just how it's um that's how it's shipped and there's a red bar so you can't can't change that one and like i said they have some pre-programmed already and it show they show up in red so um i i had i did see because i do believe they had the polycarbonate uh, mod 007 a little while back and I did want to get a hold of it but this one that's the anniversary edition um, it's it's very unique and it has that magnetic switch and I mean I like I said I really hope that I'm just doing something wrong and that's why the uh, three pin switches don't work because I think that'd be pretty cool to be able to actually you know do a combination maybe I want my modifiers to be you know, extra heavier or tactile, and I want to use the regular magnetic switches for my alphas or whatever. Different combinations, but off the bat, this this keyboard really does sound nice. Um, like I said, I, I enjoy my mod 007. I've modded it now a few times, um, including replacing it with the newer motherboard. But um, I just like the design of it. It's obviously not a low profile, but I like the, the sides. I like the profile. And um, this one, it's just, it sounds and it looks nice. I, de I definitely will be coming back to it, especially if I can um, figure out the, the issue with the switches. Though I may actually... If everything fits, I may put the PCB from this one inside of my um, aluminum case and then put, you know, that PCB in here and then try to get, I think, like a thocky, like get something just as deep and thocky as possible. Or maybe go for the, uh, what? now it's Mahjong tiles. I've heard it as raindrops, I've heard it as poppy, I've heard it as creamy, but... Everybody seems to to be really happy with Mahjong, Mahjong tile, so Mahjong. 
so we'll see i think that i can i can get a a, a different sound of it but out of it but i think that it's it sounds and it feels pretty good stock plus it's uh the seventh edition anniversary edition my um my girls my wife and my girls have uh they one squealed when they saw this because they think that it's really adorable now they all love hello kitty um and they said it kind of reminded them of that i was like no that's just the and they're like aka I'm like oh man I must talk about keyboards a lot that you guys know. <laughs> and that that's the Akko logo or the Akko mascot. But, well, it is what it is. So, anyway, um, I I like it. I'm, I'm going to reach out to Akko. So, I will update um, with what the situation is. Because if it says that it accepts both three-pin or regular mechanical switches as well as magnetic switches, then... I mean, that's a huge plus because then it's, you know, it's like a multi, multi-use and to be able to go from one switch to another, to be able to just be like, all right, I want to try these mechanical switches out. Oh, no, wait a minute. I want to try the, you have different things that you can try out, especially if you can mix and match them. That would be awesome. So we'll have to take a look out for that. Um, so I will be coming back to this um, and I'm going to be sending a link to Akko and see if what they say about that and hopefully it's just a firmware upgrade or i gotta enable something or disable something that i just missed um, to allow that to to work anyway i'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Akko mod 007b he pc seventh anniversary edition i think i got that right I think I got all of it in there. So I'd love to hear uh, what you guys think about this keyboard down in the comments below. If you got any questions, anything at all, let me know. I do my best to uh, answer as many questions as possible. Let's get a conversation started. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.